Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Julietos, brought to you by his awesome book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages, everything you need to know about training, nutrition, PEDs, supplementation, usually the questions you guys ask on the show, most of them are actually covered in there, so pick up a copy on Amazon.com, while you're on Amazon, get yourself a copy of my book, Real Bodybuilding, great book. Uh, and before we get started with the doctor, please, guys, remember, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. It doesn't cost you anything. helps me out a little bit. If you like these videos, hit that thumbs up, leave some comments below, and share these on your social media if you really like them. We appreciate it so much. And now, all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome the good doctor himself, George Antuliatos. How are you, doctor? Hello, Ron. What's up? So welcome back from Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I apologize to everybody for how horrible my head looks right now. It's going to take a little while for it to, to look normal again. But I did have a hair transplant in Istanbul. I was much closer to Dr. T than ever before in my life. Just a one hour time zone away from, from Greece. No, um, zero time zone. Actually, we have the same. It's no, just one hour it's, five, but the same time zone. Yes. Oh, maybe. I think because they were eight hours ahead of East Coast. From East Coast. Yeah. yeah. And you're seven hours ahead of me, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but man, uh, first time ever in a Muslim country, beautiful, beautiful country, great people, uh, very different experience for me. I didn't, I did, I did a quick tour of Istanbul, my wife and I, one day, so we didn't see that much, but we saw uh, where the Hippodrome used to be, we saw the Blue Mosque, the Grand Bazaar, things that are thousands and thousands of years old, statues of like Medusa that they had that were like two or three thousand years old, really cool stuff, um, but yeah. Um, I'm back home. I'm happy to be home. And uh, yeah, you're you're very you're very close to having your your daughter Nicole being born. I think as we speak, you said one week yeah, away. By, by next weekend, most probably. Wow, so close. Now, I was talking about, about the uh, the last episode. I told you this is my new book in Greek. It's about my biography, and you're included in seven in different chapter. Oh wow, awesome! <laughs> yeah, of course, and uh, we have the pictures of us. Oh wow! Thank you, man. That's yeah, awesome. very first picture. Yes. Oh, I love that picture because I was like, I was like flexing hard there. <laughs> yeah. I was running you, as they say. I was doing the angle up and out, trying to out angle. Yeah, yeah. And you, you got this Arnold book too that you that you got. Yeah, the cover actually now Arnold, as you know, published this book. This is the small version, actually. Yeah. And this is the big version of. Ooh, that is huge. Oof. <laughs> Ages is about twenty pounds heavy. Wow! This picture is it, it was from Aspen, I think so. Yeah, and it was in the cover of Van de Fer. Oh, that's right, a long time ago. Yeah, Samir Benu told me today that Arnold bought the rights of his black and white picture for Miles Zeller for two million dollars. Ooh! Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Art was a cool guy. Uh, He's been yeah. It's, it's a great book to put in your sitting room, you know. Oh, yeah. We call them coffee table books because, you know, people just yeah. sit there and look at them. And, wow, look at this. That is the biggest, one of the biggest photo yeah, books I've ever seen. It's actually a photograph of Arnold by Andy Warhol. Oh, yeah. So wow. Andy photographed him instead of painting him, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Arnold, everybody loved Arnold. Who's not, what's not to love? Man. So uh, we had a good response on the first show. I appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching. Tell your friends to watch. Share it. Uh, we're trying to build this channel up and, you know, support Support the doctor's book. Everything helps. We're going to get to as many of your questions every week as we can. We're not going to get to all of them because some weeks we get a lot of questions, but we do try to pick the ones that are going to help the most people out there. Uh, and let's get into it. We've got some great questions this week. So let's kick it off with the first one. Uh, what's your opinion for DIM supplements? Do they really work as an anti-estrogen? Can you use it on a cycle and after for PCT? So you can control estrogen. Yeah, so basically DIM, which is a compound uh, that comes from broccoli. Bro broccoli has anti-estrogenic properties, but also it's anti-cancerous, great antioxidant activity. So DIM is useful in order to block the bad estrogens, it's shown, that are, uh, are dealing with actually BPH and perhaps uh, proliferation of cancerous cells in the prostate. So it's not worth of trying DIM in a steroid cycle, okay? I use it, I use DIM within my TRT 
in order to avoid my estrone to elevate and cancer is associated with estrone. So it's not about reversing my gynecomastia. Actually, um, if you look, if you put DHT cream on your nipple, it will suck it up. Oh, wow. Yeah, it has a <laughs> property. So I'm using now the cream, the some cream, but also we are available of having DHT cream as well. It's more expensive, of course, but if you put some cream on top of here, wow. then it can reverse the giant, yes. Wow. Because I never heard it, that. and that's why the finasteride or the duster are the and the androgens that are used in order to, to grow their hair. Because if you kill the DHT, obviously then you have less hair thinning, right. then you may develop some china yeah. because you cut off the DHT that has anti estrogenic properties. Yeah, and we just discussed before we started recording, I'm never gonna be using trend or anything like that that's gonna affect my hair ever again because- no, you will produce a lot of DHT, no. Just testosterone and you'll definitely block the DHT with those medications. But also you're gonna take the benefits of testosterone. Yeah, I mean. I'm 54 years old. I think trend and all that stuff, even in small amounts, bad, bad news. So no more. Uh, this is another great question because cancer is something that's going to affect one in every three of us. So a lot of you guys watching this and girls, unfortunately, if you don't get cancer, someone you know and love is going to have is going to have cancer at some point. So this is a great question. What are the best supplements and PEDs for raising immunity and lowering cancer rate? Any good anti-cancer supplements? that you could recommend? Now for supplements, well, uh, antioxidants are notorious in order to lower the oxidative stress that uh, could be also associated with cancer and uh, inflammation. So of course I'm using injectable glutathione. I'm using also NAC that provides glutathione, orally also glutathione. Um, now, to classic antioxidants, vitamin E, or beta-carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, milk thistle, selenium, and zinc also provide uh, antioxidant properties. We have also alpha lipoic acid, ubiquinol. And now we have the notorious resveratrol, M&M, uh, NAD, and then M &M, M &M may also produce some NAD that have, has life extension properties, mm -hmm. quercetin, and spermidin also, these are four supplements, uh, very uh, known, well known for the anti-aging and perhaps against cancer. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, as Dr. Hedog says, minimize your stress. Don't overcook your food. Steamed is the best, then it's boiled, and then it's cooked, but never do it well done, okay? Mm. Yeah. Uh, plenty of vegetables and fruits. Avoid the extreme sunlight. Um, and of course, I mean, tobacco, narcotics, ethanol, which is alcohol. Yeah. Anabolic steroid pills that may give you hepatic cancer also. Mm. Avoid red meat without vegetables because as the meat bypasses through the colon, it will irritate. And if you don't have greens, then you have more constipation. This is how colony carson develops all right mm, yep yeah well i've heard uh I, blueberries are supposed to be one of the best yeah, blueberries, natural antioxidants. blueberries pomegranate also blackberries mm. and also alpha thymosine is a, is a, uh, alpha thymosine is an injectable peptide that kicks a lot of the, the immunity okay. also gh can proliferate the t and beta cells of the thymus Small doses of GHs, one or two I use. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a very important question that we answered because that you answered, I should say, because cancer, again, much more important to prevent cancer, guys, than worry about your big muscles. Yeah, really, I have bad genes for cancer. I lost both my parents from brain tumor. But with epigenetics, you may reverse the genetics. Let's say, like, Rich Party had not the best genetics, like Lee Haney, but he managed to come. Run around because his epigenetics, the way he trained and he ate, yep. reverse his perhaps not perfect, um, how you say, uh, the, the skeletal structure, so yeah. you can kick out your bad genetics for, for cancer, the way you live, the way you eat, you sleep. Uh, of course, sleep is very important, okay, for immunity and mm -hmm. uh, avoid toxic 
substances, harmful substances. Yep. So basically, your lifestyle yep. will dictate the way you will, uh, I mean, uh, get older because aging is a disease. Yeah, very true. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, next one. People care more about sex than just about anything else in this world. So, Dr. T, can you please reveal your best protocol for extreme libido that you've ever been on? What about you, Ron? Please state dosage and PEDs when you felt the biggest sex drive in your life. Yeah, listen, those are more is no better. I'm telling you an example. There was a patient of mine who was injected one and a every day. So seven and a vials every week. Oof. You couldn't say that he was a poor star. No, it doesn't work this way. Because also then you have sky high estrogens that will affect your sex, your, I mean, actually your erection. Hmm. But I believe the testosterone propionate that comes in out faster, that kicks very fast. Proviron, which is DHT that will spike your free testosterone more. Yeah. Uh, manage your prolactin always, because high prolactin will lead you to an orgasm, meaning you're not able to- uh, uh, Ejaculate. Yeah, ejaculate. Hmm. Now, don't kill your estrogens because Attacking your estradiol will kill your sex drive. All right. Yeah. Hmm. And so, you don't know, you don't need halo testing, for instance, because the super androgen. I mean, masterone and proviron are uh, DHT synthetic that can do the job of crashing the SHBG. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll answer the question. In my case, I think when I've done. Test and trend together, I had the strongest sex drive. I mean, the strongest sex drive in our life is going to be when you're very young. So I'm but assuming this question. Because right after some time with trend, they say it goes down. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, maybe the first like four weeks on trend and test together. Okay. Uh, or what you define as, as a super libido is the, the number of interpolations or the quality of sex. I mean, you're able to... Um, to respond to the stimulus of your sexual partner that particular time, okay? Instead of doing five times uh, within a day, for instance. It's about the quantity, the quality or the quantity. Yeah, and I mean, I, I don't understand why somebody would want to have an extreme libido because yeah. then you start, all you can think about is sex. You're distracted by like every attractive female. It's, it's, it takes over your whole brain. You know, it's very, very damaging in a lot of ways to your lifestyle if all you think about is sex, 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 unless you're a porn star. And most of you watching, you're not porn stars. So why would you want to do that to yourself? The porn stars inject yeah. anticoxide, star, okay? So yeah. the coverage that is something yeah. that has, has to do with the blood flow, not the... the right. And, you know, we have... We have all these ED, ED drugs, Cialis and Viagra and other ones for, for erections. Uh, next question is pretty similar. I, I, they say how to increase testosterone. They must mean naturally because obviously you would just inject testosterone to increase your testosterone. So yeah. what are the natural ways to increase your testosterone? So it's very important sleep, cholesterol, zinc. Uh, do not overtrain. Do not drink alcohol. Stay out of stress. And of course, there's a plethora of supplements that kick the hormonal panel, tribulus, the aspartic acid, maca, fenugreek, okay, ZMA. Um, but definitely, you're going to rise your testosterone if you don't sleep from 11 to 7 before midnight. Yeah. All my PCT protocols work this way. People that don't follow this appropriate timing of the sleep do not double their testosterone as others that sleep well. Yeah. Yeah, we have this this stupid hustle harder culture where, you know, sleeping is looked at as weakness. Like they said, people get complimented for sleeping only two to three hours a night because they're working so hard all the time. But your health, your immune system is going to be destroyed. You're going to break down your nervous system again. Okay? 100 percent. This is a strange question, but I like it. I heard from King Kamali that injecting insulin in the thighs makes the quads grow. Is that true? Can I do it intramuscular under the skin? I remember when Jay Cartel said that it's better to inject post-workout the IGF-1 into your thighs instead of your belly mm -hmm. because you're going to avoid the bubble gut so that you may stimulate the quads to grow beside the, the, the skin is very thin in your quads, so injecting straight to the muscle. And most important, you're going to avoid the visceral fat enlargement, you know? Yeah. So you're, you're, talking IGF, about, you're talking about IGF-1, though, not insulin. IGF-1, well, very They different. have similar metabolism, but I think IGF-1 is more important to use post-workout rather than insulin. Yeah. Actually, it's hyperglycemic, but also 
it can proliferate the cells like the GAs. So it's like having GAs in its own together. Anyway, uh, but speaking of basically, yes, I think it's the smartest way to do it in the delts or in your quads rather yeah. than down into your stomach, okay? Yeah, but do you believe insulin itself will cause localized muscle growth where you inject it? No, but I believe that you're going to avoid perhaps the bubble gut. Of course, mm -hmm. there are several receptors, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I, IGF-1 is what I've always heard about having that ability to, to right. give you the localized. But it's a and thousand MGF times more expensive than insulin. Way more expensive. Way more, yeah. Boy. Insulin is very cheap, yes. Yeah, and yeah, very hard IGF -1 to get. IGF-1 is, is more expensive than even on GH. Yeah, I mean, back, I heard a few years ago, the late John Meadows used to say, in IGF-1, the real IGF-1 was so hard to get that there was one only like one guy from France that supplied almost all the pros, and they all called him Mr. Incrolex. That's how hard well, IGF-1 is. That's I heard hard about 800 was. pounds, so $1,000 something like that. Oof, good Lord, okay. Here's a good one. I drink lemon water every day on an empty stomach. I put creatine in it as well. Is that a bad mix? Well, the reason of drinking lemon is perhaps to flash or the GIT. They say also lemon, even though it's acidic, it can alkalize the GIT. Anyway, but I think the best option with creatine is grape juice because it's hypertonic and it's also uh, hyperglycemic and it can do the job by initially a rash and influx of the insulin and the gradients into the sarcoplasm. Yeah. Do you do you remember the first the first in, um, creatine supplement it was phosphogen from uh, from oh, the cell cell e the phosphogen. yeah EAS came out with phosphogen in like nineteen ninety three or four HP, HP yeah horsepower I and they and they told you to mix it with grape juice remember yes yeah so there we go they had it right twenty twenty five years ago thirty years ago is that thirty years ago now wow uh, can women use growth hormone for fat slash weight loss at what dosage? I think when I use enough. Hmm, wow. Simple. That's very cheap, very economical. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy, but I, I think in, GH is used by every competitive division, even bikini. I hear bikini girls talking about GH. Yeah, the lean out, right? Yeah, of course. I don't think they're trying to get huge. One IU is not going to get anybody huge, put it that way. Um, here's a good one. You've talked, this is in your book. So guys, Bulking cycles, cutting cycles, it's all in the doctor's book, Bible of Bodybuilding 2. But we'll tackle this question. How long should a moderate bulking cycle last? For instance, test of DECA bulking cycle at 400 milligrams test, 200 milligrams DECA. It all depends how you start. What's the basis of your labs? Hmm. How much is also your hematopoe, your liver enzymes, your lipids, hmm. your uh, urea and creatinine, okay? Yeah. These are the main systems you need to watch out your liver your kidney and your heart so if you start in the green zone it's unlikely to go to the red zone if you start in the orange zone with very moderate numbers yeah you're gonna uh get toasted so it depends also of course your diet and if you use preventive supplements all right um yeah of course don't smoke because you will lower your HDL, don't drink because it will elevate your liver enzymes, okay? Yeah, so as far as a, a time length, you know, cycles usually can go anywhere from eight to 20 weeks, depending on, you know, who, it's a personal decision, but, you know, the labs, like you like you mentioned, you have to, you have to keep, keep check, keep an eye on all those things because somebody can be on one cycle for eight weeks and they're, it can really start messing with their, kidney and liver and all those other values, whereas someone else might be able to sustain a cycle for 16 weeks before they start seeing really bad changes in those, correct? Yeah. Yeah, well, the other people that never come off wrong. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of people who call blasting cruise, blasting cruise, never come off. All right. Another, uh, this is also related to cancer and tumors. Can testosterone, HCG, DHEA, or provirin accelerate the growth of an existing tumor or increase the risk of getting cancer or tumors faster than a normal person that doesn't use PEDs and supplements. Let's the say only thing that comes to my mind is this is prostate cancer. Already mm -hmm. you have prostate cancer and you use DHT, this is not a good idea because it will feed. Mm -hmm. But if you take, of course, just testosterone, there's no problem by taking dutasteride. I have a patient who does this, also DIM, 
Um, so just to start, so there's no problem, but if you take also on top DHEA and, uh, DHA and uh, DHT, then it's not a good idea to stack them both if you have already pre existing prostatic cancer. So it's only prostate cancer that's affected can ex be accelerated. It's not other kinds of cancer. Yeah, right. I mean, this person is not toxic to the liver. All right. Uh, listen, Rona, I'm telling you this with every, uh, frankly, if I ever get cancer, I'll never stop my testosterone. Yeah. I want to have a quality of living even on my death bed, you know? Yeah, I mean. And I do believe that this will accelerate my, my cancer. I mean, just 100 milligrams of testosterone, really? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Of course, stop it GH, yes. Stop it GH, of course. Uh, but using testosterone will make you less vulnerable. Fair enough. Okay. Here's another libido question. We're getting a lot of similar questions this week. From a libido perspective only, do you think HCG monotherapy would be better than TRT? Is HCG better for high sex drive in dosages like 1,000 IU every other day or 1,000 IU daily? Some people swear they have a higher sex drive on HCG only rather than TRT plus HCG. No, monotherapy will shut off your legs. Mm. Okay, the best option is to do testosterone along with HCG to minimize your, uh, to, to avoid your atrophy in your testicle, but also increase your intratesticular testosterone that will also increase your sex drive. Personally, I'm using ma daily microdosing of HCG 100 I use. Okay. And my sex drive is fine. Uh, my total testosterone is just below 1,000 with the, with the cream. And I'm using also one provider in a day in order to avoid um, my HCL to be lower. Um, and I have pretty good sex drive. I mean, whenever I want to have sex, I have sex. You know, mm -hmm. just I want to have sex every hour, okay? <laughs> but when we're supposed to have, it's okay. I don't have problem. I don't take ED drugs, never. Wow. Only many years ago when I want to impress my uh, mistress, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Who's having sex every hour? That's what I want to know. <laughs> How do you get anything done? I guess you're like retired or something. Anyway, uh, next one is, can I use clenbuterol as a kickstart to lose weight? No, you need diet, of course. <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, there are lazy people telling me, do I have to exercise? Yeah. Can I sit on the couch and take clenbuterol? Uh, what is this? Come on. Yeah. This is the wrong perception. The laziest, the laziest drug I can think of is also the most dangerous, DNP. That's the laziest drug in the world. Yeah, we tried that. I think so. She tried yeah. it in order to get shed. And when he was using the hydroxyca, he ah. was like a pig, remember? <laughs> in the yeah. late in the late nineties, and they, they assumed that he was using DNP. Oh wow, yeah. So I, I have you ever, did you ever try DNP? Well, they told me it was DNP back in 2001 when somebody a dealer gave it to me. And as far as you remember, also what people are expressing is that you start having fever, you sweat a lot. <laughs> and if you mess up with this thing because it affects the hypothalamus, there's no antidote for that. You're dead. It fucks up the mitochondria, you know? Yeah. No, you can die from just a slight overdose, correct? There were people under the air conditioning sitting on the, you know, on the, the downstairs, you know, take off mm -hmm. the, the carpet and the, uh, so they were sweating like pigs, you know, they were uh, under the air conditioning, taking cold showers, it's horrible. Yeah, my, uh, the guy I used to train with, he tried DNP, he didn't even need it because he was naturally a very lean guy, but he wanted, he loved trying drugs, he just loved drugs, but he was so ill, so physically ill that he couldn't even go to the gym and train. He'd call, it'd be like nine o'clock. I'd be texting him. Where are you? He's like, oh, bro, I can't make it. I feel like shit. I got a fever. I can't move. Like, what's the point of this drug? It makes you feel that bad. You know, it doesn't affect your heart rate, though. You just yeah. start to boil from inside but without speeding your heart rate like with other stimulants. Yeah. Very <laughs> the freakiest thing, huh? Yeah. I mean, I, I would never try it. I, I would love to just get shredded by taking a drug. But I'm not. I would never want to take that chance. It's just. It's why. It's not worth it. Just diet and do some cardio for God's sakes. It's a lot more effort, but at least you know you're not going to die. Anyway, final question. Wow, an, an, another sex drive in here. What do you think would be better for high energy and best sex drive? One thousand IU HCG three times a week and two hundred fifty milligrams a week test undecanate from Nibido, or five hundred IU HCG three times a week 
and 500 milligrams a week of nibido. Well, nibido actually works very slowly. Mm. So the smartest thing to do with nibido is cut it in four pieces and do 250 milligrams every two weeks. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So one ml every two weeks. That's how it kicks. Okay, fair enough. That's all the questions. That's it, man. I think the next time I speak to you, you're going to be a father. So we're excited for you, man. Your whole life is going to start a brand new chapter very, very soon. Well, better late than ever. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know, I, I don't want to sound corny and sappy and emotional, but nothing, nothing in the, once you have a child, there's like nothing in the world that is important to you as that child. Nothing. Sure. Yeah, your life, you're living your life not just for you anymore, not even just for you and a wife, yeah, a partner. Parents, no matter what the child's age is, they're always going to see as a kid. Yeah. Even if you grow old, you know, I mean, <laughs> I remember my grandmother, you say, where's my daughter, my mother, and my mother was not 75, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, my daughter's going to be 30 years old in a couple months, but she's still my little baby girl. She'll always be my little girl. My son, 24 years old, he's always going to be my little boy, even though he's a grown ass man with a little beard, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, doctor. And guys, once again, get on Amazon, support the show, support Doc's book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, everything in there and so many pictures, so much information. Knowledge is power, guys. So please educate yourselves on all these matters. Don't ever jump into PED use without getting a good, solid information base uh, of education first. Very, very critical. Uh, for next week, guys, leave your questions under there. Leave any comments. And again, subscribe, like, share. Please do all that and support the channel. It means a lot to us. And that's it. Thank you, George. Appreciate it very much. And uh, very excited. Very excited to hear. I want. I can't wait to see your baby pictures from my little baby, Nicole. I want to see you holding that little baby. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Ask Dr. Testosterone. We'll see you next time.